What's up everybody, how's it going? So a little over a week ago, I posted a video where I shared exactly how much I made as a software engineer at Facebook. If you haven't seen that video, I'd recommend that you check it out. I'll put the link in the description below. Now, after I posted that video, I started getting a lot of messages from people telling me that the offer I got or the compensation package that I had was pretty high for my level and asking me you know, how I did it. How did I get such a high compensation package? Did I negotiate my offer and so on and so forth? So I figured that I would make a video on exactly that to share with you some of the things I did, share with you some of the techniques that you can do both before you actually get your offer and after you get your offer during the sort of negotiation process. And hopefully this will help you get the best offer that you can get from a big tech company or from any tech company, or at the very least, maybe it'll help you get an extra 10, 20, even $30,000 in your offer. So if you haven't seen the video about how much I made at Facebook, Spoiler alert, I'm about to divulge that because we need these figures as a reference point for later on in the video. So basically, I had a total compensation package for my first year at Facebook, because it included a sign-on bonus, of $348,700. That was $167,000 in the form of a base salary. Then there was $16,700 as the baseline annual bonus, then $90,000 per year in the form of stock, and finally $75,000 for the first year as a sign-on bonus. Oh, and I was an E4 engineer in New York City, so the mid-level engineer. So now that we have all the relevant information about the offer, let's actually look at what I did to get this offer. So the first thing that you can do to maximize your chances of getting a high offer, and this really isn't rocket science, this is something that you're probably all aware of at this point, but it's to do well on the coding interviews. It's no secret, I've said this many times on my channel before, that the coding interviews of these big tech companies are the number one deciding factor of not only whether or not you get the actual offer, but also of how good your offer is. So really, do your best to prepare for the coding interviews. I remember my interviews at Facebook were some of the best, if not the best interviews that I've ever done. I remember walking out of them feeling very confident. I remember thinking I would be very surprised if I didn't get an offer because I just felt like I had done really well. But seriously, I can't stress enough how important these coding interviews are. At the end of the day, your performance on the coding interviews is gonna be the most powerful signal that these companies have about you and about your abilities and your performance. So the better you do there, the more they're gonna think that you are an amazing candidate it, that they don't want to miss out on, and the more willing they'll be to give you an amazing offer. And so of course here I'll recommend AlgoExpert, my company, AlgoExpert.io. We just released eight new questions on the platform and we're working on a lot of new content and a lot of new features, so go check it out if you want to do really well on those coding interviews and maximize your chances of getting a high offer. And on that note, these past two weeks we've been getting so many messages from AlgoExpert customers who've gotten offers from either Amazon or Google. I'm not sure what it is about these two companies, but we've been getting a particularly high amount of people who've used our platform and have gotten offers from either Amazon or Google, either as full-time employees or as soft or as uh, interns. So just an exciting little fact. Okay, so that was the obvious stuff about doing well on the interviews. But what about after you've done well on the interviews, when the companies are ready to extend you an offer? That's where the real negotiation starts to come into play. And so here, I'm gonna divide this part into two things, knowledge and leverage. They even rhyme. The knowledge part is about being informed of what the best possible offer that you could realistically get is. The leverage part is about actually getting that best realistic offer. So for the knowledge portion, the first thing that you should do is to figure out what level you're gonna be coming in at at the company that you're going for. All of these big tech companies have levels for their engineers and also for most of their other functions, but for engineers, they have levels and the canonical examples are gonna be the Google levels, which are L3 for the entry level, L4 for the mid-level, L5 for senior, L6, L7, and so on and so forth. And then 
all of the other companies have very similar levels. For Facebook, it's identical, except it's an E instead of an L, E3, E4, E5, E6, blah, blah. For Amazon, it's SD1, SD2, SD3. You get the idea. Now, the reason it's so important for you to figure out the level that you'll be coming in at is because these companies have actual defined compensation ranges for these levels. So for example, if you're an L4 engineer at Google, your total compensation per year might be anywhere between X dollars and Y dollars, and the range or the difference between X and Y might be pretty big. So you could fall at the very lower range or lower end or the very upper end. So to actually know the level that you're gonna be coming in at, you can either ask your recruiter flat out, hey, what level is this position for? And they'll likely be able to tell you, or you can pretty easily guess it. For instance, if you're a new grad just out of college, or maybe you have one year or less of work experience, you're gonna be an L3 engineer or the equivalent. If you've got a few years of work experience, you'll likely be an L4 engineer or the equivalent. Maybe you'll try to shoot for L5, so that's where it can get a little bit tricky, but you'll likely be L4. Overall, you should be able to estimate for yourself, depending on your situation, what level you're gonna be bucketed into. Once you know your level, you want to figure out what the total compensation range for that level is. And you want to start becoming familiar with the types of base salaries, of bonuses, of stock awards that you could expect for that level. So the best tool to do this, by far and away, is this website called levels.fyi. They aggregate compensation figures or compensation data from engineers like you, like me, who give the data voluntarily, and they provide it on their website such that you can see it bucketed by levels, by company, by location. It's a really useful tool, and we've actually done a lot of partnerships with them in the past with AlgoExpert. We're currently advertising on their website with AlgoExpert, but I would definitely recommend that you check it out. Now, I'll show you how I used levels when I was negotiating for my offer at Facebook. I was almost sure that I was gonna be coming in as an E4 engineer at Facebook. I had recently been promoted from L3 to L4 at Google. I was maybe gonna try to push for an E5 at Facebook, but I knew that it was more likely that I would end up as an E4 engineer. So I went on levels.fyi and I started looking at compensation data for E4 engineers at Facebook. So right off the bat, well, you can see the Algo Expert ad right now, but you can see the average total compensation package that you can expect as an E4 engineer at Facebook. Roughly $246,000. You can see the base salary, the stock, and the bonus. As a side note, and this is going to be a feature request for the guys behind levels, I've noticed that when you drill down into actual compensation entries on levels, the bonuses are kind of all over the place. It seems like most people consider the bonus the annual bonus, which I think this is what it refers to, but some people will put in their sign-on bonus in that annual bonus, and so it kind of skews the data, so that's something to keep in mind. But so, here you have the snapshot. If you click on view full details, you can actually see much more useful information about E4 engineers at Facebook. You can look at individual entries and you can start getting an actual idea of what do E4 engineers at Facebook actually make? Okay, some of them get $236,000 total compensation. Some of them get $262,000 total compensation. And you can see what are their years of work experience? How many years of the company have they been at? So this starts to give you a really good idea of the range that you can expect. And then here you actually have a salary range chart and you can see that E4 engineers are probably gonna be going as low as you know 210,000 total compensation and as high as 281,000 total compensation. Again, this doesn't seem to include the sign-on bonus. Feature request to the levels.fyi guys to really add an explicit entry for the sign-on bonus. So I started to drill down into all of these entries, especially for the ones based out of New York and based out of the Bay Area, so San Francisco or Menlo Park, because these were gonna be the most relevant to my offer as an engineer in New York City. So you see, what was useful for me was that I could see that on average, most E4 engineers seem to have a base salary somewhere between the high 140s and high 150s. There were a few in the 160s. I saw a couple of like 165s, 
maybe one higher than that, but otherwise that's where the base salaries were. Same thing for the stock. The highest that I could find was someone with an $100,000 per year of stock. And then the bonus, again, for those that weren't skewed values, it was clearly just roughly 10% of the base salary. So this gave me a great idea of what the realistic highest offer I could get as an E4 engineer would be. I was also really lucky because I was working at Google at the time. And at Google, there's this internal spreadsheet where employees anonymously share their compensation packages. And they share a lot of details, including, you know, what year they started at the company, how many years they've been at the particular level that they're at. And so I got an added layer of data data to base myself off of. And I will say that for the most part, everything on levels seemed to reflect what I was seeing internally at Google. And by the way, I would really encourage you to share your compensation package on levels. It's anonymous and it really helps out the community. And this reminds me, I should do it because I don't think I've done it yet. So now, once you have that knowledge, once you're informed about what the realistic best offer you could get is, you can actually strategize around this whole negotiation process. Because as an example, if you get an offer, let's say as an E4 engineer, that tells you that your base salary is gonna be only 135,000, then you probably know that here you're on the very lower end. Maybe that makes sense given your circumstances, but maybe that doesn't. And similarly, you know that you shouldn't ask for let's say $200,000 as a base salary because that would just be way above the maximum values that you could expect as an L4 engineer. This brings us to the leverage that I mentioned mentioned earlier. What is going to allow you to command the best offer in that range that you're now informed about? First of all, competing offers. This is perhaps the easiest way to gain leverage in the negotiation. If you're applying to Facebook, for example, and you've got competing offers from Google or from Amazon or from a hedge fund or from Uber or some other big tech company, then you're going to be in good shape. You're going to be able to use that competing offer to get them to give you a better offer. Now, interestingly, when I applied to Facebook, I didn't have competing offers. At the time, I didn't want to apply to a bunch of other companies. I was really only interested in Facebook. I had a really good job at Google. So I didn't apply to other companies. I didn't have competing offers. So what I did to gain leverage was I told Facebook very frankly that I had a great job at Google. I was performing very well at Google. I actually shared my performance ratings with them to give them sort of data points that they could use. I told them, here's where I stand at Google. I'm in the top X percent of engineers at my level. I'm doing really well. I've got a great trajectory. I really like it here. So you're gonna have to give me something really appealing if you want me to come. That was my leverage. The last piece of advice that I'll give here, which is related to leverage, is to never ever, ever, under any circumstance, share your current compensation figures with the recruiters that you're speaking with at the company. They are gonna try very hard to figure out how much you're currently making because that's gonna be an additional data point that they can use to their advantage to get you an offer that might not be the best offer, but that would be something that you would likely accept. And you do not wanna give them that information. You also don't have to. The important thing to realize here is that the recruiters that you're speaking to, their job is to get you to accept the offer now because they've extended you an offer, they've told you that they wanna hire you, so they definitely want you, but they also want you to accept the lowest best offer that they can give, if that makes sense. They wanna sort of minimize your cost. So they may very well be very adamant about knowing how much you're currently making and they might phrase it in different ways so as not to be super blunt, it's important that no matter how awkward it is, you simply tell them that you don't feel comfortable doing so. If they ask you, for instance, well, how much stock would you be leaving on the table if you left Google or if you left whatever company you're at? Don't tell them. Tell them that you don't really feel comfortable divulging this information. You've told them about your performance. You've told them about your competing offers, if you have any, and that should be enough for them to give you the best offer that they wanna give you. And here I'm gonna recommend this really useful guide. It's free online that I actually used when I was negotiating with Facebook. It's on this website called Team Candor. I'll put the link in the description below. It's really useful on how to negotiate with these recruiters at big tech companies. Anyway, that's all the information that I've got for you as far as negotiating an offer at a big tech company. To recap, do really well on the coding interviews, know the level that you're coming in at, 
be very familiar with the compensation range for that level and have leverage, whether it be competing offers or your current job or maybe your performance of your current job, have leverage. And don't tell the recruiters how much you're currently making. I really hope you found this video insightful. I hope you'll be able to use some of the stuff I mentioned for your own negotiation tactics. And as always, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.